when you're watching a new episode of a TV show, what is the first thing that introduces you to the world or story you are about to see? Okay, well, some shows might have a previously on segment about what happened in previous episodes. But for most iconic shows, there will be an intro sequence or theme song paired with visuals and sneak peeks for what is about to unfold. From a young age, TV show intros and theme songs have always fascinated me. They're a great way to prep you for what is about to unfold, create iconic sequences that anyone jumping in for the first time can get some sort of understanding of what they're getting into. And then there's things like the regular show intro that's just a title and a single note. Yeah, not all intros are created equal. Some are amazing, while some are ear grating, don't match the show, or are just plain annoying. So today I want to take a moment to look back on some intros from various different shows, what they do right, what they do wrong, and how to make a great intro or theme song sequence. First things first, let's establish what in my opinion makes a good intro. Of course, art is subjective and there are many reasons as to why each person would like what they like. However, I have identified four points as to what a good intro should do. Number one, display the world, characters, and premise. Does the intro let you know who the characters are, the protagonists of an epic, the hosts of the competition show? Does it offer a window into the world of the show? Does it let the viewer see what the show may be about story-wise? The intro needs to show off these ideas and get people interested in watching the rest of the episode. 2. Match the tone of the show. Probably the easiest to do. Basically, if it's a comedy, make something lighthearted and goofy. If it's a horror show, make something eerie and off-putting. If it's an action-adventure, make it epic. You want to make sure you're properly showing off the feel of the show. 3. Have staying power or evolve with the show. The intro shows off the show, right? So it should make sense that it stays up to date as the show goes on to reflect new characters, plot points, etc. The intro needs to be able to change if needed or be able to match the show throughout most of its run. And number 4. Be enjoyable to watch with each episode. In the age of streaming and people binge watching, this is less important since a lot of people skip the intro but that shouldn't be an excuse to make a bad one. Does the intro look and sound good? Does it properly get you ready for an episode? These are still very important ideas to consider. So with this in mind, let's look back at the regular show intro again. This is merely a title card, only showing the show's title and a space-like background that we do sometimes see in other places. Doesn't really show off anything relevant to the characters or world, though. It's short enough where I don't mind rewatching it, but I don't really like it that much either. I would say that the drone that plays gives an offsetting feeling that I'll admit does match the show's feel in how something always goes weird or wrong. And since it doesn't really include anything, it technically has staying power to stick with the show. But is that really saying much? Out of our four points, I'd only give this intro one for matching the show. In fact, just for fun, I'll be giving each of these a score out of four based on my criteria. I'd say regular show is far from a good example of an intro. For a better example, let's move to regular show's partner in crime, Adventure Time. Adventure Time already does a lot of stuff better than regular show, immediately showing off various locations of the Land of Ooh, including the Ice Kingdom, Candy Kingdom, and the Treehouse. We also see several of the most notable characters in the series, leading to the iconic fist bump and lyrics. This song always puts a smile on my face, even in the darker episodes. It encapsulates the idea of fun adventure in a magical land that the show is about. I'll admit that as the show ventures into darker, more plot-driven seasons, it may not fit quite as well, but to be honest, I still think it works really great. Also, for miniseries and specials like Stakes and Elements, they switch it up, which is a nice touch that adds to its staying power. The show has always been about grabbing your friends and going on an adventure with Finn and Jake, and this great theme song matches that amazingly. 4 out of 4. And while we're here, let's round out the trinity of 2010's Cartoon Network with The Amazing World of Gumball. This show has a short intro and a longer version that only played some of the time. The short one is similar to regular shows, but the bright colors and jovial music more expressively fit the show to me. The longer one does show off the Watterson family and many side characters in Gumball's world with the same music. But if I'm honest, I don't really like the longer one as much. The art style and jumble of visuals really only fits season 1 Gumball. And as the series went on, it became less about wonder and more about referential comedy and fourth wall breaks, which the longer intro doesn't match. The short main version isn't perfect, but I'd say it does a much better job of matching the full show, even if that's only due to nostalgia. I'll give the shorter one a 2 for longevity and matching the vibe, and the longer one a 2 as well for showing off the world and still matching the feel of the show. I don't think either is overly enjoyable like Adventure Time. 
I'd say that's enough Cartoon Network for now. I think the next course of action should be some iconic shows from their main competitor, Nickelodeon. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't I hear, hear you! you. Aye, aye, Captain! Okay, then, let's go to SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob, being a simple comedy about this one little guy throughout its entire run, got it easy in terms of having an intro with staying power, introducing you to the character, who he is, where he lives, etc. The music and lyrics are also very fun, almost being a sea shanty, both matching the underwater theme and the fun that SpongeBob as a show represents. It also makes it fun to watch. I'd say this is a great intro for this long-running show, and I think we have another 4 out of 4 on our hands. On a similar note, you have Fairly Odd Parents. This intro is even better at what SpongeBob is doing. They immediately introduce the concept in the first couple verses of a kid who no one understands and the fairies that help him, as well as his parents and evil babysitter. Perfect introduction to the world, and they get extra points for longevity for the series concept. In fact, they even add later characters like Poof and Chloe as the show runs into later seasons. It's fun and fills your imagination with creative premises, and on top of all that, the song is a total bop that I've never gotten tired of listening to. 4 out of 4, Nickelodeon is sure on a roll. Now for Nickelodeon's most legendary show, Avatar The Last Airbender. Much like the previous Nickelodeon shows, it is a very iconic opening, starring off with the four elements plus the backstory of Aang and the Fire Nation. This is our first intro that doesn't include a theme song, and that does sort of contribute to it being an intro I skipped while binging. And I'll be honest, as the show goes on, they probably should have changed some of Katara's dialogue. I don't think we need to hear about how she met Aang in the middle of season 3. I hate to say it, but I kind of think this one is a 2 out of 4 for being a great introduction to the world and matching the more serious tone of the series, but not being the absolute best overall. While I am definitely more of a fan of theme songs, the talking and recap of a show's premise style that Avatar does can still be good. The intros of this style that always come to my mind are Arrow and The Flash. I've dabbled in the Arrowverse, and these shows are the two that I've seen the most of. Arrow immediately establishes Oliver Queen's backstory with great music choice, and I love how it evolves. Changing the words as Oliver's mission and status as a vigilante and hero evolve. The Flash follows suit in giving Barry's mission and backstory, but adds a bit more about the overarching plots of each season. This makes the intros a bit longer and has them give away a bit too much. Arrow's intro is concise, a good recap, and matches the show's more street-level and gritty tone, so I'm going to give it a 3. It could be a bit more enjoyable, but it gets the job done. The Flash gets a 3 as well. It's longer and even less enjoyable to rewatch, but the music and motif of believing in the impossible match its more fantastical nature compared to Arrow. While we're in the world of DC, let's take a look at some more of their shows. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, by far the shows I've talked about on this channel the most. Justice League the Animated Series has a CG intro sequence displaying the characters and their powers. The animation is certainly dated, especially when compared to the main show, but I don't know, they keep to a silhouette look for the most part to mask it, and I like the music. It shows off the characters and gets you interested in who they are, but holds enough away from the viewer where you want to learn more and see their adventures. It's also kind of long, so I'm not always willing to sit through it every time. I definitely get it if you don't like this one, but I do have a bit of a bias. It's alright, but I'm giving it a 2 because I'd say it matches the tone well, and at least for the original series has staying power, but they could have done a better job displaying the premise, and it could be a lot shorter. Then we have Justice League Unlimited, which I would say is the better of the two. The music is more exciting with electric guitars. The visuals shown clips from various episodes do a much better job of showing off the team's heroic exploits, as well as several different characters. It feels easier to rewatch each episode, but at the same time, the intro kind of overstays its welcome, so I think I can only give it a 3 out of 4. Still, it's a pretty good intro for one of the best superhero shows. Batman the Animated Series has another one of the most iconic show intros of all time. It's essentially a short film displaying a duo of crooks being stalked and taken down by the Dark Knight. The music and dark visuals immediately put you into the world of Gotham and the gothic atmosphere present in the show. This intro perfectly displays Batman and what he's about, a vigilante that strikes fears into the hearts of criminals and flawlessly defeats them, standing as a protector in the night. It can feel long at times, especially if you're watching several episodes in a row and just want to get to the main story. But really, if any superhero show deserves to have a longer intro, I think it's this legendary incarnation of the Caped Crusader. This is a perfect intro, 4 out of 4. You know, these intros have been pretty good for the most part, actually. Let's see if we can look at a bad one next. Oh, gosh. Look, Teen Titans Go! definitely has its fans. 
and I have never been one of them. But for the purposes of this video, it doesn't matter that I think the characters are all unlikable, the plots and jokes are dumb, and that's barely even a show about superheroes. We just need to look at the intro. Right away, I can tell you that this intro is not fun to watch. The music and the lyrics just don't sound good. The only thing that gave me enjoyment are the dancing segments that differ each season. The intro shows off the characters, yes, but it shows the bare minimum of their powers. What do they do? Why are they a team? Why do they live in a T? We don't know. According to IMDb, the show is supposed to be about their days off from crime fighting, but nothing from the intro or heck the episodes themselves show that. And like regular show, it doesn't show anything that could give it or have it lose staying power. And like regular show, if it doesn't even try to, why should I give it the point? However, I must admit the high energy and somewhat goofy visuals do match the tone of the show. The characters definitely dance and do silly things like that. Congratulations, Teen Titans Go! You got one point. The original Teen Titans intro, on the other hand, is much more descriptive about the premise, with lyrics literally singing about them being heroes. It's not my favorite by any means, but it's a decent song. Also, the fact that there's a Japanese version for the show with anime inspiration is a nice touch. They show off the characters in a much better way as well. Surprising no one, this intro is much better. I'll give this one a 3 since I don't really have the love and attachment for the original Titans theme that I do for the DCAU shows, but I totally get it if others do. Okay, I think that's enough DC shows for now. How about we look at sitcoms next? This video has been pretty animation heavy so far, but this will give us an excuse to look at some more live action stuff. Friends has always been an iconic intro to a beloved show. I'd say it's pretty enjoyable, but I will admit I haven't watched the show as much as other people have. It shows off the cast including the names of the actors through various clips from the show and them dancing at a fountain. The intro changes with the seasons, keeps to a core friend group of the show, is fun, and I'd say it matches the tone well with the song literally being about being there for your friends. I'll give friends a 4 out of 4, why not? The Big Bang Theory as a show isn't everyone's cup of tea, but to be honest I've always been a fan of the theme song. It was written a few minutes before the band whose name I probably can't say on YouTube needed to turn in a theme song, and it's really fun and high energy. The lyrics are also about the evolution of science and humanity, and since the show is about scientists, it really works. The sequence ends with a shot of the cast enjoying dinner in Sheldon Laird's apartment, one of the show's main settings. This shot also adds in Bernadette and Amy for later seasons. I'd give it a 3 out of 4 since it is kind of a shock switching tones from the opening scenes to a song, but otherwise it's enjoyable, shows off the characters enough, and evolves over time. Finally for sitcoms, there's The Office. Much like Friends, it shows off the cast with jovial music fitting its silly nature, while also doing a lot to establish the setting of Scranton and Dunder Mifflin. This intro also evolves with new characters being introduced and changes other little things as it goes on. Not too much more to say really, I think it's a good intro, but it's not too special. It does deserve a 4, despite not being a personal favorite of mine. And to end this video off, I would like to touch on three theme songs that I'd consider to be my absolute favorite intros. These three are what I consider to be a gold standard for making an intro that is fun to watch, match what the show stands for, showing the premise, and as you will see, they all have really good staying power. First up is one of the longest running animated shows of all time and a staple of pop culture, The Simpsons. You want to know how to show off a world and characters? This intro literally shows off Springfield in its entirety and without words shows off the characters' personalities perfectly. You see that Bart is a troublemaker, Homer is clumsy and unintelligent, Lisa loves jazz, and more. The music is fun and perfectly accompanies the family's journey home through the wacky world of Springfield. All of the gags from the couch to the chalkboard make the intro a blast to rewatch every time just to see the differences. The intro in later seasons also gets a graphics update and shows even more of the world, but of course there's no beating the classic era version. 4 out of 4 for the Simpsons family, and this one gets the bronze medal as my third favorite intro. Next up is the iconic original opening for the Pokemon anime from the Indigo League. Honestly, this video could be filled up with Pokemon intros because of all the different versions from the different arcs. They all have their ups and downs, but the original version from the first couple seasons is easily the most beloved, and in my opinion the best. First of all, the song is amazing. It perfectly sums up the dream of Ash and any kid playing Pokemon, of being the best trainer of all time with excellent music to boot. We see many characters from Ash's friends and enemies to the various Pokemon they may encounter throughout the series, establishing the world perfectly. No notes from me, 4 out of 4 again. This one is probably my second favorite intro, because I think there's one that is just a bit better. 
My favorite TV intro has similar appeal to Pokemon and Adventure Time, being that I grew up with them. But to be honest, if I remove that nostalgia, I'd still say that Phineas and Ferb's intro is immaculate. Name a sequence that better embodies the feeling of seizing each day and making it better than the last than this. I'll wait. Phineas and Ferb's exploits plus Candace's antagonistic role are perfectly established. I guess I could complain that Perry and Doofenshmirtz's side of the show isn't referenced, but they aren't the title characters, they're the fun side story a lot of the time. This intro is probably the most fun one to sing along to out of any of the ones I've covered today, and since the show has a simple premise, it can stick with the show throughout its entire run and even into the revival that was announced. Much like the protagonists themselves, this intro sequence does it all. Um, Phineas and Ferb are making a title sequence! Also, fun fact, the iconic opening lyrics about 104 days of summer vacation were placeholder lyrics that Dan Pavemeyer wrote that were supposed to be changed out later. And now those lyrics are perhaps the most iconic part of the show. Really, Dan and Swampy captured lightning at ball when it comes to writing a great theme song and for making a fun summertime show as well. This intro gets a 4, no, 5 out of 4. I don't even know where that 5 comes from, but I don't care. If you're familiar with the show or the song, I don't think I need to overly explain why this is amazing. Anyway, those are some of my thoughts on TV show, intro sequences, and theme songs. I didn't get to talk about a lot of awesome ones like Gravity Falls, Steven Universe, Animaniacs, Bojack Horseman, or countless other examples, but if you guys like this video, I'd love to do a part 2 someday. Let me know some of your favorite or least favorite intros in the comments, and I could talk about them next time. Of course, leave a like, subscribe, or hit the notification bell if you feel like it, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.